to have like your first placement with Logic and Eminem is crazy. When we're working, it's just like all we're thinking about, especially before then, was just like, yo, have no money. <laughs> like, yo, we need to go, go, go. And it's just a matter of beat after beat after beat after beat. As a first placement, like to have Logic and M on a record is it's a stamp. It's a yeah. validation to say like we can succeed at a high level. <gasps> Fuck rap, bustin' like an addict with a semi-automatic who'd had it and he ready for anybody to buck back. Hold on, catch a vibe, ain't no way in hell we leaving nobody alive, even suicide, no fuck that. Bobby feeling villainous, he killing us. I'm coming for your man and his lady, and even a baby. I'm feeling like I'm chicken, 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 slim shady with rabies. I'm coming at the mouth, ain't no All of us are musicians, you know, we didn't have a goal or aspect like dude, producer trio at first. The beat kind of started out in separate laptops. We had just got off the phone and we're talking like, let's get it in, like, well, let's like bust out a bunch of beats. That day, I could not make a beat to save my life. I could not make a melody. I could not make a bass line. I could not do anything. So when I do that, being a drummer before producing, I'm like, cool, I'll just make some drums. The best thing about having all three of us is that I got two other guys who can take this drum loop and turn it into what it turned into. When we go through stuff, usually we kind of facilitate what one person might not be able to feel. Or like, mm -hmm. I know that if I put this, like, they're going to think like, okay, this might be cool. If it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. So we always give creative input since like we worked together for so long. The beat for Homicide started with the main trap drums. It just started out with the uh, kicking a snare and a tempo. I went generic 140, you know, you can get a good bounce at that tempo. Just to give it a basic groove, I uh, just threw eighth note hi-hats on top of it. There's this stock plugin in Ableton, basically gives it random velocity so that the hi-hats aren't just like the same volume the whole time. So I'll kind of tweak it until I like the way the bounce sounds. I added some more hi-hats for like the rolls, but I also added this stock Ableton panning plugin. I think it just gives it a little bit more ear candy, especially since there's a lot of room in the kick and the snare. The hi-hats are really like the thing that's driving the rest of the beat. At this point, I'm doing this thing where I go into a contact by Native Instruments and I'm taking their live hi-hat sounds and then I'm playing a pattern on top of it. The live hats by itself just some. And then when you layer it with the other hi-hats, it sounds way more full. There's one more hi-hat, just the open hi-hat for like a more trap open hi-hat. I feel like it just gave it a unique bounce, a different type of trap bounce. That was pretty much the whole drum loop and then from there, I just passed it along. Hearing it, biggest thing for me was I liked the rim a lot and I liked mm -hmm. the natural hi-hats over it. I was stumbling through my hard drive and I forgot we had made some old samples. See if there's anything salvageable. A majority of it was trash, but I know this one thing I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, you know, I, I still rock with this. So I had pulled it up uh, and threw it in uh, Serato. I pitched it up really high just because I really liked when the 808 hits or when the kick hits, like the frequency for that bottom end is gonna like really stand out. Went on to the next uh, part of the sample and just, you know, pitched it an octave down. I feel like it sets the tone too for the, the intro of the record to come in with that dark sound. There's one more sound that, uh, oh, yeah. two more sounds that he uh, contributed in this. I was making a beat for one of the rappers we worked with, Ice Cold Bishop, and one of the beats he had had, I was hearing a, a bark or a rough, and I'm like, instead of going through my hard drive and trying to find it, I usually will just like take out my phone and pull up like the voice memo app. This is the voice memo, just completely raw. Sorry if you say anything weird in this. It's, it's all right. Uh, do, do. <gasps> all you had to do was just cut off the last thing. Yeah and not even add anything on it. It was solid the way it was, so. Going into that bark, he has this uh, reverse kick just to kind of lead into it. Yeah. Sounds like this. We have these uh, bricks that we had got from Drum Broker and particularly this individual named Shroom. I had kind of thought of that in mind once Bo had like linked me up with the track and I was thinking this, this would just be perfect to use. Just that natural like boom bap. And I was just like messing with it a few different ways to kind of give it its own sound. 
I had used a bit crusher to kind of give it that crunch to it. I kind of stretched it out just to kind of give it that halftime sort of feel. I just wanted it to sound dusty. Like that was my biggest thing. Just mm -hmm. like kind of give it that dusty, crunchy feel. The record sounded so cool. Like with the drums and everything, like once I had the, the shroom break like in there, it was just kind of like, it was just kind of at the point of just adding the 808. I feel like 808s is always the icing on the cake for like songs that we do. Once we got all of our sounds put together, the drums, the sample, the bark, um, the 808, the shroom drums, everything put together sounded like this. Going into this, there's a lot of like, you know, rough times of knowing I'm not sure if this will work, but like we all had faith and we thank God that we got this opportunity. <gasps> It's changed our lives for sure because like there's definitely a different like way people are like looking at us now and for us it's like I mean we're just making beats you know what I mean When you get to Eminem's verse there's more in the beat and that's from Eminem's camp They added some orchestral choirs choir yeah. low end brass and stuff and it came out really cool None of us thought like, oh man, this is the this one. This is the one, Yo, bro. Shut it down. <laughs> call your mom. It's yeah, over. like it's never those. Like, <laughs> we just get a conference call from our manager Austin, and he's like, "Yo, they really like it." That's the end of that conversation. Fast forward like, a couple weeks later, hey, even better news. Turns out that it's probably gonna make the album. And then fast forward even further, then they're like, "Yo, this might be a single for the Logic album," and we're like, "Nah, yeah. nah." Yeah. Hearing the end result definitely changed all of our perspectives i'll tell you that much it's our favorite like, beat yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely logic had released that post and he's like says like homicide featuring you know eminem and we're like holy shit like yeah. <laughs> what the hell it's actually crazy we, yeah we did a little uh we did a little kind of pool of a bet right before because we knew it was a feature but we didn't know who yeah like, and he actually yeah, got it maybe. which yeah. was crazy because it's like <laughs> Come on, how do you guess that? 